difficult step for uh, Zelensky to take. Right, OK. Well, I'm delighted to say that Gary Tabak is now ready to join <laughs> us. Gary, hello and welcome. Yeah. Hello, and it is great to see my dear friend Jason Smart. You know, he's a very smart guy. Very <laughs> well, smart I, guy. I, I, I agree with you. I'm glad we managed to get the tech sorted out. Um, we were, Jason and I were just chatting about, about uh, Reznikov's dismissal uh, and, and Umarov's uh, appointment. And, uh, and Jason was, was explaining how uh, Umrov's connections uh, internationally and uh, his approval levels within, the, within Ukraine uh, are very high. Would you agree with that assessment, Gary? Yes, I would, absolutely, I would agree with it. And as a matter of fact, over so many years, I don't remember me disagreeing with uh, Jason Smart. Again, he's a very smart guy. Uh, it is absolutely true. It is, it is true, and it's about time that it, that it happened. I don't think there's going to be much uh, influence at the front, because, again, many people think that it is a military position. But as a warfighter, Mr. Resnikov is not a warfighter. He's an administrator. So they just replaced an administrator. Things should not change in a war fighting technique or war fighting uh, tactics and uh, war strategy just because the Minister of Defense has changed. OK, so what, sh what should we expect to change then, Gary? Well, hopefully we expect change that there is going to be more effective and efficient way of providing weapons, needed weapons, to the Ukrainian military, to the Ukrainian war fighters. And uh, this is what, uh, as a matter of fact, right now um, I am um, among the, the, the fighting troops. And this is what they're expecting. They're waiting for the right instrument to, con to continue with the offensive and to continue to clear their country of this cancerous growth on the, on a, on the body of their country. Mm -hmm. So... Hopefully, we will be able to get them the right instruments uh, with, the, with the new administra uh, administration at the Ministry of Defense. And again, of course, this is it's going to it's going to take a while. You can't fight a corruption over one night or replacing one individual. It's a system. So hopefully, it will work because it is strange, especially to us, to the Western uh, people that the war is almost two years and nobody, and we know, you know, there's corruption and nobody has been prosecuted. Nobody's been thrown in jail. And even, uh, you know, Napoleon said after a year, he can freely execute any supply officer, any, any officer that, that's been dealing with it or a procurement officer. And in my years, I remember in Desert Storm, several procurement officers were prosecuted and uh, court-martialed in the United States, exactly for that, for corruption. So it's strange to see that nobody, it hasn't happened in, in a country like Ukraine, that nobody has been really smacked hard at war time, during war time. Well, th there have been, there have been some arrests and dismissals, for example, to do uh, with the recruitment offices, uh, the heads of recruitment offices and so on. Uh, Jason, do you think that Omerov will bring a new, a new approach, a new energy, if you like, to rooting out corruption in the military? No, I think that's one of the reasons he was chosen, obviously, is that he does have such a clean background. He was from the office that handles privatizations, which historically in the former Soviet states was always an office rife with corruption. And despite being there for a period of time, there was never any accusations made about him being corrupt or having dirty hands. And that's, that's exactly the sort of image that Zelensky wants to put forward right now. Uh, he doesn't want there to be any arguments coming out uh, domestically or certainly not internationally, that the money going to Ukraine is somehow being misspent or mismanaged. And so uh, this step at this point is something that's definitely going to probably also boost Zelensky's own rating within the country to show that he is uh, committed to the war effort by putting 100 percent in it. Every dollar that goes to the military is a dollar that's well spent and uh, in no way misused. Right. So, Gary, um, earlier J Jason was saying how, you know, moves such as these uh, do actually raise Zelensky's standing in, in, in Europe and amongst uh, international leaders. Um, how do you think this is going to influence his, his uh, accession to the EU or, and or NATO in the long term? Well, I think it's it's a it's a positive step forward where you can see that there is uh, you know 
there's no one hand washing the other. And even though it was uh, uh, the, the the former minister of defense was your good friend, it didn't it didn't secure his job because you have to first of all the priorities to to have the. Uh, your job uh, completed. So hopefully it will work. But again, I think that, uh, again, it's my personal opinion that in a democratic society, replacing one person, even though if it's a minister or a secretary or, or, or a general, one person replacing is not going to really impact unless it's a teamwork, unless it's a team effort to fight that or a team effort to change something. Maybe in a dictatorship, you know, one guy can order uh, and, and everybody have to do it or they're going to be executed. But in a democratic society, it, one person is not enough. So it's a, so hopefully it's a whole team effort. It's going to be that the society is going to, uh, is going to start to change, that the uh, ministers, presidents, uh, secretaries uh, realize that their jobs are not forever, that sooner or later they're going to be king for a very short period of time, that commanders will change, and you'll have to go back to civilian regular world and uh, build your life there. So hopefully this is going to be settled and, and absorbed and internalized by the former Soviet society. Right. So, so Jason, I mean, is, is this in some strange way, this whole restructuring of society, actually, uh, an opportunity to raise Ukraine's position in terms of uh, corruption levels? Uh, in in the world, I mean, right now it's it's you know uh, just above Russia uh, in terms of corruption levels. Is this an opportunity for Zelensky and Ukraine generally to restructure into a cleaner, more structured, less corrupt society? Well, clearly Zelensky wishes to tackle corruption. It's quite obvious from this decision, and earlier decisions that he's made. Uh, and it is something that I think is going to happen sooner or later. But in this case, it's going to have to happen now. And the reason it has to happen now is international support for Ukraine is contingent on the fact that Ukraine shows that it is not going to be a you know post-Soviet land where anything goes uh, like Russia. It has to be different. And the way that can be different is by tackling corruption. I mean, in the, in the, if Ukraine, moreover, if after the war, Ukraine wishes to have assistance in rebuilding, which obviously it does wish to have, uh, any allegations of corruption there would also be totally disastrous for the nation. So by rooting it out at this point, or taking steps now to begin rooting it out, of course, it is a process. I agree with Gary. It's not something that's going to just happen overnight. But by taking the steps now, laying out the fundamentals, it does prevent future uh, incidences of corruption, such as the ones we mentioned earlier, from uh, being able to usurp the good work that's being done. And it does allow for the uh, future investments in Ukraine, whether it's in the military or in the rebuilding, to uh, come with some sort of a guarantee or assurance that none of it would be lost to corruption. Right. I mean, we saw uh, ourselves firsthand, didn't we, the effects of corruption on the Russian military, its tanks breaking down, running out of uh, spare parts and all sorts of things which had been sold off. Um, so I suppose, as you say, Jason, a dollar saved in corruption is a, is a dollar spent towards the war effort. Now, generally, um, I'd, I'd like to take the, the conversation now a little bit broader and to the future um, and, and bring in uh, the American uh, uh, attitude towards Ukraine. Thus far, it's been extremely uh, positive and supportive. Um, what, I mean, but, you know, you've got the elections coming up uh, next year. What is the general view? What is the general perception? Because one of the arguments I've been hearing a lot uh, in debates in the States is about Ukrainian corruption. Do you think that's going to make a difference to the attitude in America towards Ukraine? Gary? Well, absolutely. I think that we're, as uh, Americans, we're used to uh, seeing the politicians being criticized and uh, being dealt with... Uh, you know, being fired, uh, at least we used to. So uh, hopefully, that, so hopefully that will uh, that will settle with the uh, with the United States. But oh, of course, we also need to demand uh, more. I think uh, from our journalist ethics, uh, not to put out a fake about Ukraine, saying that there is this corruption. For instance, not too long ago. A uh, very uh, famous uh, Tucker Carlson had an interview with uh, Colonel McGregor, who said that Ukrainians are selling our jewelry and uh, anti-armor uh, missiles 
to the to the drug cartels, and there was a picture shown, except that the picture was not of a Juvelin missile. It was some missile, anti-tank missile, I think Swedish or something like that, which was very, very disturbing to me personally to see that the United States Colonel West Point graduate can't tell the difference between Juvelin missile, the American missile, and some, and, and some foreign missile accusing Ukrainians uh, in such a way that hundreds of millions of people see that Ukrainians are selling it to a drug cartels who are firing on our border guards, which is disturbing, which is not right. So we, should, we shouldn't do that. We should help Ukrainians to fight uh, the, uh, the corruptions and to help them to, to win this war uh, as soon as possible, rather than undermine their effort in it and accusing them of something that doesn't exist. Right. So we should be more careful about that. Certainly, um, uh, I hear that. Jason, so, so there's Gary saying, well, look, you know, uh, reporters have, have a duty to, to be fair and accurate in their reporting. Um, do you think there's a chance of that happening? And, and what do you think the impact the impact of that is going to be on an American attitude. We only a few seconds left. Jason? Yeah, I absolutely agree with Gary. Uh, and the fight against corruption is something that Americans do take seriously. Uh, the U.S. does not have high amounts of corruption, uh, and it does not appreciate it. And it's certainly I can understand any taxpayer who would be wholly disappointed or shocked if they were to hear of any sort of corruption that was abusing their money, and they should be outraged. And that's why I think it's so important that Zelensky is taking the right steps now to assure that any sort of even image or hint that there might be corruption is dealt with immediately so that rumors do not persist, uh, such as the false rumors that right. any sort of American tax dollars are being misused. Excellent. Well, thank you, gentlemen, both for sharing your insights with our audience tonight and do come back again soon. Have a good day. Thank you. Thank you. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Bye, Jason. That's all from us on this episode of World Today. But as always, don't go away. We've got uh, lots more coming up for you. Bye-bye.